Today I'm going to talk to you about the MKS Gen L, but uh, what I'm going to do is something a little different. I'm going to talk about how the Marlin firmware relates to the actual board. So the first thing I'm going to start with is opening up the pins for the MKS Gen L. This can be found online, but uh, I can also post a link to help you find it. So inside here, as you can see over here, it says D37, D17, D23, D27. These are pins that are associated with digital pins. Some unique things are where it says like A13, A14, A15. Those are analog pins. And then where you see 5V and GND, that's five volts and ground. And then over here for our extruders, Extruder number two, which is listed as E1, it says D7, that's digital pin seven. And then the first extruder, which would be D10. So now that we have an idea of what this looks like, I'm gonna close out of this and I'm gonna open up the Marlin folder for the bug fix. 1.1.9 bug fix. Inside here, we're gonna search on pins. And what we're looking for is pins MKS Gen L. And we're going to look inside here for a second. Inside here, we have a definition of what the board name is, which is MKS Gen L. Then we also have a MOSFET D pin 7. What that means is digital pin 7. And then we have two unique settings for chip select. These are used usually for something like a TMC2130 extruder. And the chip select is the actual way to specify the individual board to communicate with. So it can only communicate with one board at a time. So it's assigned a digital pin, which a wire runs to the board and allows it to communicate. Right here, we have something unique. It says include pins underscore ramps dot h. What that's saying is take the pins underscore ramps dot h file and concatenate it together with this one or append it to this one. So what we want to do is actually look inside this file because that's where the remainder of our pins can be found. And then one last thing I haven't spoken about, this actually is a conditional setup for making sure that we don't exceed the number of extruders. So we might have to manipulate this in the future if we want to add a third extruder. So I'm going to close out of this in a second. And I'm going to show you what in boards.h our board looks like. It's boards underscore MKS underscore Gen L. That's the actual name of our motherboard. And then I'm going to show you the pins folder. Inside the pins folder, we have a specification for all the pin values that we are using in the first file that I showed you when we opened up for the pins for the MKS Gen L. As you can see, there's something unique here where it's saying pin 7, 11, 6, 5, and 4 for servos. We only have four servos. This is talking about the older ramps board, which is ramps one underscore three or one three. Then down below, we have a bunch of information about our limiting switches. Limiting switches are end stops. And then they talk about the accesses and we have a chip select set for each one, which I'll go into in the future with uh, a stepper and explain how that works. So I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to open up the Marlin firmware solution file for the IDE. Okay, for the IDE, there's several different configuration dot files for header files. 
configuration.h is where we'll do about 85 to 90 percent of our configurations configuration underscore adv or advanced configuration.h is where the remainder is so i'm going to only talk about configuration.h in this tutorial so moving through it really quick you can see that there's a version number that they've set up for the actual file they talk about who developed it and what information is relevant to it down here they talk about getting started this is useful links that you can go and look up information about the marlin software and how to configure it they talk about multiple printers being delta the scara the hanger printer um, i'm going to skip those because i'm not knowledgeable in those then they also talk about the ability to add uh, information about your particular configuration such as you being the author uh, show the boot screen um, they have a splash line which says what software build it is so if you're keeping track of it in the SVN or a source control then you can add a build version right here then you can also add your own website to the actual printer boot screen down below here we have the ability to specify a custom boot screen right now it's commented out so you need to remove the comments and point it to the boot screen if you don't know how to do a boot screen you can always check out my ramps 1.4 tutorial on boot screens and uh, i guess now you can add a custom image which i haven't worked with yet so i don't know down here you have the ability to select the serial port I prefer to leave this alone because default works perfectly fine. Here's the baud rate. You can change the baud rate if you so choose, but this is the optimized one currently, so I'd leave it alone. Here we have a value for Bluetooth, which you can communicate with your printer board without using a serial USB cable. So that possibly is going to be a future tutorial. Here's where we actually specify our board type, which is the MKS Gen L. Down here, it looks like uh, we can give a custom machine name to our printer if we so choose by removing the comments and putting in whatever we'd like between the quotes. You can also do the same thing with the serial number. So if you're making multiple ones and you want to keep track of serial numbers, Here's where we can add multiple extruders. It looks like we can do up to five in the Marlin firmware. Currently, we're gonna stick with one. Also, we have the ability to set our own particular size for filament. I use 175, but I usually don't change this value because I set it in the Pronerface software or the Slicer software. Here, we have the ability to use a single nozzle. Now, most people are not familiar with the Cyclops or a print head called the Diamond print head. For a Cyclops, it's usually two extruders, so two steppers pushing material, and it usually has one single nozzle. So if you're using that, you need to remove the comments. And if you're using a Diamond print head, it would be three. And obviously this would be, probably be 175 for a diamond print head because I think that's the only size that you can use in it. Okay. Some multiplexer, I haven't used it, so I don't really want to talk about it. But uh, I haven't used this either, but I know what it is. This is a switching extruder. It uses a single stepper to push material in. So what happens is you're changing the path of what can be pushed in using a switch. So it's using a servo here to change the angle between two feed tubes.
This looks very similar to this. Obviously, I'm not super experienced in these, so I'm going to leave them alone for now. This looks like the ability to dock your X carriage with your extruder connected. Um, I haven't used it, so I don't want to speak too much to it. Here's a mixing extruder. This would be something that you would use for something like your uh, diamond print head where you can mix multiple colors. This looks like when you use multiple extruders, you can say what the distance between them is. So the differences of X and Y in the same plane. This is a setting to specify your particular type of power supply unit. I usually just go with the default. And that's uh, some of the setting logic that might be used for it. This is for PS on. I don't normally use it, but it's used, I think, on the ramps 1.4 printer board. Now, thermal settings. This is something that we all use. Normally, it's default negative 1. So, I'm sorry. Normally, it's negative, not negative 1, but 1. So, if you have a particular type of thermistor, to tell temperature, then you would change to the number that's specified down here below. But in our case, we're going to stick with one for our extruders. So if you have one extruder, your thermistor would be one. If you have multiple, like a second extruder, you could say that it has the same thermistor type, which is one. So it's a separate set of wires running to your other extruder that has a default value for that particular software type. And the same goes for apparently a bed chamber and also your printer bed. But I personally don't use a temperature setting for the printer bed because I no longer heat it. I use PLA on it. Here's the ability to set dummy values for your thermistor. I currently don't use this for anything, but you have the option to do it. This is uh, something to keep track of multiple extruders and make sure the difference doesn't float too much. This is a way to keep track between them. I'm not super sure on the actual functionality of this, so I don't want to speak to it too much. And then here's the minimal temperatures that you can set for your thermistors. By default, they're all five. And the same thing goes for your extruders. So you can have five extruders with the default max temperature. And then your bed has a default max temperature as well. Then there's the ability to actually customize or tune your temperature settings with these values. I currently don't use this, but uh, if you want more precision, you can always do that for both your bed and your extruders. Then here's a setting for your default cold extrusion. This prevents your stepper motor from stepping if the temperature hasn't been reached, being 170 degrees Celsius. And then I guess there's also max length that's added down here. And then thermal runaway, this is kind of important. Do not disable this and always keep an eye on your printer when printing because this is what prevents the printer from either catching on fire or breaking itself. So if this fails, being in the room when it fails, you'll know that something's wrong. Um, it's happened to me once, so I don't recommend having that experience. This is for a Core XY. I personally don't use this, so I'm not going to really talk about it. Here's something that we all use. It's N-step settings. Currently, they're default on for use X-min all the way to the Z-min. Um, if you're using a 
what is it, a delta, then you might have to flip the settings and enable or remove the comments for these three. But uh, I don't use a delta, so I can't really speak to that. End step pull-ups, I believe, are used for uh, additional sensors on your end stop. I haven't used this, so I'm not going to speak to it. Here's uh, something that we all have used and uh, probably will use in the future. Um, sometimes when you move to your x-axis and you type, you move your x-axis to the end stop and you type M119 for a G code, you might get false when it should say true when it's actuating the end stop. Inverting it allow you to change the logic from false to true by flipping it for you automatically. Down below, this is new functionality. It's just been recently added to Marlin 1.1.9. This allows you to specify multiple types of steppers. They're all default A4988, but then you can add the particular situation that you have right here for your stepper if you have multiple types. This I don't currently use. Um, but I guess if you want to save cycles on your CPU, you can always enable it by removing the comments. I, the same goes for stop, or excuse me, for end stop noise filters. You can enable it if you so choose, but I don't. Motion settings. So distinct E factors means extruder factors. So if you have unique motor types or mixed motor types, you can enable this by removing the comments, but most of the time people use only one extruder. So this is your X, your Y, your Z, and your extruder. These you might need to calibrate in the future. Um, I've done a video on how to calibrate your extruder. So the principle is exactly the same for X, Y, and Z. It has to do with the measurement of actual divided into your what you're getting or vice versa. I can't remember the equation, but it's listed above in the calculator. Here we have default max feed rate. I believe this has to do with the speed at which things moves. Then we have default max acceleration. And they go into defaults for everything here in case you want to set them. The jerk value, I believe, is how fast it accelerates and then decelerates, but don't quote me on that. S-curve, I'm not exactly sure, but there's a link here where you can look it up. And then Z-probes. I've done a couple of videos on this. This is enabled by default, so I'm going to move kind of quick through it. Um, you might have to enable this in some cases for, minim for the Z-min probe end stops. And then uh, sometimes you want to probe manually. Sometimes uh, you're going to have something particular about it. You know, the distance away. I'm not exactly sure of these settings, but you can use your LCD panel for that. That's probably why you can enable these. Uh, fixed mount probe. You can use this for an inductive or a capacitive end stop for your Z axis. And then this has to do with being able to stow your probe with a servo. Um, I did a video on this a long time ago for ramps. You can take a look if you're interested in doing it, but just remember the firmware was much older when I did that. I've also done a tutorial on the BL Touch, so you can check that out on your uh, free time. And then these are a series of settings that you can set for your probe in the beginning if you want to turn off the power or use solenoids to extend a sled or something like that. This is used to tell positionally where the probe is in relation to your extruder being the X, Y, Z plane of the Cartesian plane. So it just says where they are in difference to where your extruder is located. This allows you to actually start probing inside your printer area. Being, I use a glass plate, so I have clips, so I want to avoid those. 
So I probably set this to 10 or 20 to avoid them. This is the speed at which it can probe. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about probing because it's kind of clear. This talks about another probe and what you can do with it. This allows you to have multiple probes if you so choose. So I'm going to scroll through this kind of quick. Here we go. So sometimes when we use the stepper, it goes in the wrong direction. You can change the value from 0 to 1 to flip the direction without taking the plug out and turning it around. You can also disable your motors if you so choose. They're set to false because I like to keep them holding where they are. So I recommend not changing these. This is a setting basically having to do with uh, something with the motors. I say don't change it, but you are more than welcome to experiment if you so choose. And this has to do with uh, disabling an inactive extruder. Um, that's up to you to play with, but it's on by default. Here we have the ability to invert the direction yet again. So you can change the direction that your motor actually turns. So if it's going to the right, by changing false to true, it'll move to the left. Same thing goes for your extruders. And then let's see. These are defaulted off, but they're experimental things that you can use for no motion before homing. Uh, unknown Z, no rays. So I'm guessing if you don't know where the Z axis is, then don't raise it. Um, this, I believe, is an offset, so when it reaches a zero position, it'll go up four, but I could be incorrect on this. Now, here's an interesting setting. This is for X, Y, and Z homing. Sometimes your end stop is in the wrong direction. By changing the negative one to a one, you can actually change the direction in which you're homing rather than flipping the actual direction that your motors turn. Here's the default bed size for your printer. So you have an X bed size and a Y bed size. Normally a heat bed default size for most people is 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters. In this case, if you want to change it to 300 by 200, you can do that here. Here is a way to define what your bed looks like to the software. So X min is the zero position. So these three would be the Cartesian starting point of zero comma zero comma zero. This would be how large your actual plane is in the XY. So it could be 220 by 220 here or 200 as it's specified up here. And then this can also change. So your height might be a lot higher. So you might be able to change this to 300 millimeters or more, depending upon how much you measure it. This I'm not familiar with, so I'm not going to speak to it, as well as this. This I'm not sure of, so I don't want to talk about it. Here's the filament runout. I've done a video on this for the ramps 1.4. There's actually two different videos that I've done on it. There's one for a end stop sensor that I designed that you can use to tell when you've run out of filament. And there's also a uh, photo electric sensor to tell but it doesn't work with color or clear filament. That's why I designed the uh, switch sensor instead. Bed leveling, I'm gonna try and avoid talking too much about. There's about five different types of bed leveling. You can try these out on your free time. Um, I personally level my bed manually. 
I'll possibly do a future video on that, but for now I'm not going to talk too much about this. Okay, additional features. We have EEPROM settings that we can set by turning on the EEPROM manually and then flashing our board with the firmware. I don't recommend doing this only because it makes your printer unreliable because most of the time people forget that they left down the settings. And then these are settings to make sure your computer or your printer don't go to sleep when they're connected. Um, I personally don't really mess with them, I just leave them alone. Here's a debugger for watching your memory. And then here's a value that uh, some people like to use. It's inch mode support because the printer is default in millimeters. But I recommend leaving it in millimeters only because the whole world uses millimeters except for the United States and all the software that you use to develop your 3D models is in millimeters by default. And then thermal units, I believe, is the ability to change from either Celsius to Fahrenheit, but the printer is default Celsius, so you might as well stick to Celsius as well. These are default sensor settings for your thermistors. I recommend leaving them alone unless you want to match them up. This is a parking feature that you can remove the comments for if you want to park your nozzle. Um, I personally don't use it. Nozzle cleaning is kind of cool. I haven't really used it, but if you switch colors midway through a print, you can cause it to spray out the excess so that you can get the color you want where you don't get dribble from the previous color that was loaded. And this talks about the settings for it. This is a timer used for your printer to keep track of how long it took to print. I personally just leave it alone. Then there's a printer counter. This is number of prints that you print on your printer. It's off by default, but you can turn it on if you so wish. Just keep in mind when you refresh your software, you might erase your previous settings. LCD and SD support. As you can see, the printer for the LCD, if installed, is defaulted to English, but there are several other languages you can choose from. If it's not there, you can also invent or make your custom language. I am not well versed in it, but you can try it out for yourself if you so choose. Talking more about language, then we have SD support. SD support is off by default, but if you remove the comments, you can turn on your SD drive on your LCD. This talks about the speed at which a serial peripheral interface will work. You can change speeds. This is for a SPY LCD, I believe. This is used for when your SD card fails. It'll try a retry. You just have to remove the comments. And then this is for changing around the menu structure on your LCD. This, I think, has to do with the movement between your uh, menus so when you're turning the dial or the potentiometer you can select the speed at which it travels this is allowing you to flip the direction at which it travels so if you're moving clockwise and it's going counterclockwise you just remove the comment here's the speaker most of the time it's a piezo buzzer so you can remove the comment to cause it to work or you can leave it default off and then this talks about i believe the refresh rate for the lcd but i could be incorrect 
this section here talks about additional controllers that you can add um, and specify. Most people use the RepRap Discount Smart Controller. Just remember that you might have to load the file for U8Glib. It's shown below in the firmware down here to where you can find it. Right here. So up here, they're talking about additional types of LCDs. This is an I2C, which is uh, another way to use an LCD. The ports are native on the ramps 1.4 next to the end stops, whereas I'm not exactly sure on the MKS where they can be found. At least the MKS Gen L, I know where they are on the MKS uh, for Gen 1.4, I believe, but they're not populated. So in future tutorials, I might go over that. So now that we're going through a series of LCDs, I'm kind of skipping them because it's the same information just for a particular LCD. Now we have other controllers. Um, you can add support for a particular type of keypad. Um, I think this goes for about $17 but uh, I haven't used it, so I can't really talk too much about it. But all you have to do is remove the comments to actually set it up. And then extra features, this talks about uh, PWM, which is pulse width modulation. It has to do with how to run a fan. Looks like you've got some settings here where you can use LEDs. Not sure what that setting is. Barracuda is used for a paste extruder. Um, you can invent your own if you so choose and see if it works with it, but uh, there might be a specific, specific .h file for this, so you might have to look it up. The Blink M is an I2C LED. Um, I've done a tutorial already on this for the Ramps 1.4. I haven't used this, so I can't really speak to it. This is settings that you can set for LEDs. NeoPixel is like a circular LED. This is some kind of logic talking about the LEDs and what to do with them. And then finally, it talks about the number of servos. Now there's something incorrect, I think, in the firmware. If you were to compile after removing the comments for this, you should get a failure because in past versions of the Marlin firmware, you had to set individual settings for each of the three. So technically it should read like this in the past. I, they may have changed it to where 300 applies to all. I'm not sure. I haven't tested it in a while. But uh, I want to take the, uh, a moment to thank you for watching my very long tutorial. And uh, please remember to like and subscribe. And thank you once again for your time.